Honestly, I do not like Emacs. It is very janky and it is very hacky. I suspect this is because it's very easy to extend. You can literally just start writing Emacs Lisp, the extension language of Emacs, and define a new function, for example, hello world. Then you can say that it, the function has to be interactive, meaning the user can run it from the mini buffer. And then you can insert in the current cursor some sort of a message, for example, hello world. Then you can go at the end of the definition of the function and you can press Control X, Control E, and that evaluates this function. And now this is a command that you can call in Emacs and it just inserts hello world. Furthermore, you can actually set a key binding to this particular command. Let's say that the key binding is going to be Control X, W, W. And when the user presses that combination of characters, just execute hello world. And now if I press Control X, W, W, it just executes that. It is insanely easy to extend. And a lot of extensions are just basically pieces of codes like that, that you execute inside of Emacs and you can actually call to them now. And because they are written by different people at different times without any proper communication, they start fighting for the same resources, which is the current buffer that you've seen in here where you can input text. Sometimes their assumptions about this environment break and the whole editor feels like it's going to fall apart. It is very janky, it is very hacky. But sometimes this jankiness enables very interesting synergy between different pieces of codes that were written by different people and those people didn't even anticipate that you can even use it like that. Let's take a look at one of the extensions that Emacs is shipped with which is called DRED. Upon seeing this extension, anybody who uses Linux or any POSIX-like operating system would not even register that this is some sort of an extension. They would say, oh, th this is the output of a less command. Th that's what I'm looking at. This is an output of a less command. What's so special about this? Well, in reality, what you're looking at is a literal file manager. You can navigate, you can press in certain folders. Furthermore, you can go ahead and rename certain files. You, you can edit this output of a less command. And there is something genius about making your interface look in, like a less command that you can just modify. So the developers of DRED were definitely onto something in here. This is one extension that I use daily and it is actually quite useful. I really like it, honestly. Another extension that I use and I had to install it separately is multiple cursors. I'm going to leave the link to this extension in the references. And it does exactly what it says. You can select a particular piece of code, then match it and then edit all of these places simultaneously. A lot of text editors can do that. There is nothing special about it. These two extensions, multiple curses and DRED, were developed by different people at different times. So they never actually meant to integrate with each other, but they do. I can mass rename file names with multiple cursors like that. Again, neither the developers of DRED nor the developers of multiple cursors anticipated that you can mass rename files like this. It just worked naturally. Which makes you think, why did it work in the first place? How it is possible for these two pieces of code to synergize like that? That means fundamentally, at the core level, despite all of its hackiness, despite all of its jankiness, Emacs is doing something right. But what is that? And I was thinking about it for quite some time, and I think I finally nailed it. That right thing is the buffer the pieces of codes are fighting for. This buffer is the ultimate communication protocol between different applications. So here's the thing, Emacs doesn't have any way to create UI. It, it just doesn't. What it has, it's just buffers into which you can put text and that's it, nothing else. So if you want to create an Emacs application that has UI, what you have to do, you have to render your UI into a text buffer. So the same text buffer into which you're typing your code, into which you're typing your text. Instead of typing the text by the user, your application has to render its UI into that buffer. And that's what we're seeing in here. And that's why UI of DRED looks like output of a less, because that's the most natural UI you can have in Emacs. 
syntax. But since it's a text buffer, which is not different from the text buffer where user inputs their text, any other pieces of code can read that text. So you're rendering your UI in a text buffer. So that means other applications can parse and understand your UI naturally. I can even prove to you that this is just a text buffer. You can save it. You can call command write buffer and we can say something like dear red ui.txt. So I save this as a text file. So now I have dred-ui.txt, I open it and it looks like the UI of dred because it uses text for its UI. I can open it in Vim. There you go. It is opened in Vim. Th this, th this is Vim. I took a UI of Emacs extension, saved it to a text file and opened it in Vim because it's all just the text. And as already said, the most annoying part of Emacs is that it's very hacky and very janky, but maybe that's what makes it so powerful. The whole editor is just the ultimate hack. And I absolutely hate that because if you have something good enough, but actually useful, you can never find motivation to finally get rid of that. And my recommendation for people who's looking to learn a cool customizable text editor, never try Emacs because you won't be able to get rid of this goddamn text editor from your life, no matter how hard you try. It's too goddamn fucking useful.